Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the third uh, live interactive session for this course Ecology and Society. Uh, you please uh, tune in and uh, if you have any doubts, queries, I'll be happy to respond. So meanwhile, I'll try to uh, give a brief summary of what we have uh, discussed and covered so far in the past few weeks. So. Uh, uh, we had uh, <clears throat> covered so far eight uh, modules and uh, nine modules. Uh, in, in nine modules, we have discussed partly about the religion in the age of environmental crisis, which we have discussed in the eighth module. I mean, in the eighth module, and which have continued uh, in, in in the ninth module as well. So, in this, we have uh, you know uh, covered some of the uh, different religion uh, which, which of course has uh, to do with the their role and, and significance with regards to uh, conservation uh, sustainability and so on and so forth so we have also discussed why religion plays an important role when we discuss and talk about uh, the whole issue of environmental sustainability and beginning with the you know debate which has been uh, based on the seminal work of engineer Lynn White, uh, the history of the roots of our ecological crisis has opened a new debate in, in trying to find an alternative uh, where uh, the ecological crisis which we have encountered is perhaps to be located in its historical roots that is religion and. Uh, being uh, uh, religion in nature, it is important for us also to engage in trying to find an alternative or an answer which is very much embedded in our religious practices, beliefs, behavior, so and so forth. And then we move on to you know uh, dealing with the uh, module on environmental ethics. So within this, we have discussed. Uh, three important themes, beginning with uh, uh, deep ecology, which is uh, propagated by uh, the Norwegian philosopher Arne Nest. So Nest uh, has tried to evoke uh, a different approaches in terms of uh, trying to, you know, uh, build or, or advocate the whole idea of self-realization, and he strongly advocated. Uh, and, and, and talk about the new uh, ecological philosophy, which he uh, fondly called as ecosophy. So, uh, ecology, self realization or eco philosophy or ecosophy is nothing but to engage in deep questioning that is, how do we position ourselves with regards to uh, nature? So, our perceptions, our outlook, our worldview in some way uh, has to uh, be questioned and interrogated. So deep ecology also tries to uh, uh, you know, posit that it has, it is different from uh, the normal uh, practices or principles uh, which is being practiced mostly by uh, the many of the human uh, societies within cell ecology. So, uh, deep ecology actually emerges uh, in, in, in uh, confrontations or in opposition to uh, cellular ecology and deeply engages with finding an alternative uh, in, in, in trying to you know, uh, deal with the whole notions of uh, environment or environmental issues. So, we have also, you know, dealt at length about uh, the philosophy which is being propagated by Gandhi or in other words we call it as uh, Gandhian uh, environmentalism. So within this, uh, from the writings of Gandhi, particularly 
uh, the motions of Swaraj, Swadeshi, or so and so forth, which, which speaks volumes about how uh, the notions of self-reliance in some way talks about the very fundamentals of how we negotiate, how we you know relate ourselves in our everyday life with our surroundings. So Gandhi uh, is also known for his you know uh, uh, well-known popular aphorism, which is called uh, "The world has enough resources to reach the to to meet the needs of human and non greens so similarly, it is uh, uh, going in line with what Nas has developed in his typicology, because uh, Nas was also pretty much you know, uh, influenced by the writings of Gandhi, and uh, in, in, in one of his interview, that one of the main tenets of typicology, he uh, sort of respond by saying that uh, <clears throat> simple in means and rich in ends to a large extent has encapsulated or, or tried to cover the whole notions of uh, or, or new paradigm of environmental thinking. So uh, then we move on to uh, social ecology, which is uh, propagated by uh, another philosopher called Ure Bookshit, wherein he argued that the way in which we treat or our attitudes towards nature or environment is strongly embedded in our social structure, our worldview, our thinking, our perception about nature in some sense uh, is uh, how, uh, what is dear in the society or how do we relate with our fellow human beings that uh, automatically reflect in the way we, you know, uh, <clears throat> treat or how do we relate ourselves with the nature and environment. So now, uh, having said that, we move on to a different module entitled as uh, Natural Resource Management. So over here, we begin trying to locate the importance of uh, local or traditional knowledge by engaging with the works of uh, none other than uh, the noted ecologist uh, P.S. Ramakrishnan in his book, uh, <coughs> One Sun, Two Worlds, an Ecological Journey. So this book in some way enters our imaginations or interrogate the way in which how the so-called formal knowledge and informal knowledge uh, interact or, or where these negotiations or uh, dialogue has been you know, getting forward. So the traditional knowledge which, which is primarily based with that of the uh, informal, that is mostly the farmers, the rural folks, and uh, which are based on hands-on practical knowledge. Whereas the formal knowledge is based on the, you know, uh, <clears throat> textbook knowledge, which is uh, based on certain kinds of concepts and so and so. So, at this context, we are also reminded about the way in which how Levi Strauss tries to contextualize. The whole notions of what he coined as the uh, bricolage or the bricolure, wherein he tried to, you know, in, in, in his, you know, seminal works in the book called The Savage Mind. So, in that, he tries to uh, engage uh, upon the way in which how knowledge system functions uh, in, in the minds of, you know, the uh, traditional people and at the same time uh, to that of the engineer. So knowledge system uh, actually functions uh, in, in, in different paradigm and uh, uh, <clears throat> which, which, which goes on to see the uh, very fundamental differences and, 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 and one needs to you know, contextualize this very debate or notions of uh, how we perceive uh, <clears throat> our surroundings and the social relations uh, as well as the social structure which we are in. So, uh, and then we go on to the final module which is entitled as debates on shifting cultivation. That uh, how uh, shifting cultivations or these traditional forms of farming which is prevalent in the uh, 
uh, some Asian massif in the upland areas where people have engaged with these forms of farming which is considered to be uh, outdated or uncivilized or unscientific from the Western civilized discourse. So I have also, you know, uh, uh, tried to bring in the whole debate of whether, you know, shifting cultivations is uh, beneficial or to what extent it is sustainable or to what extent it is eco-friendly. There are uh, a lot of an extensive studies mostly carried out in the Nordic India region, particularly by uh, the noted ecologist P.S. Ramakrishnan and his team. And, and, and uh, in, in many of their uh, works, uh, there, there is uh, findings which reveals that uh, the traditional farming, most important is cultivations to a large extent has uh, contributed to the biodiversity conservations and it is a sustainable agricultural practices. But moving away from that, there are also, you know, ecologists and environmentalists, uh, mostly the uh, scientific foresters who have actually, you know, borrowed this perception about uh, the unorganized or shifting cultivators who are possibly seen to be, you know, a threat to uh, the environment and possibly responsible for the deforestations. Now, it is also important to see the works of uh, James C. Scott in the book, The Art of Not Being uh, Unwarned, uh, talks, uh, you know, at a very uh, lengthy in, 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 in what he called as uh, or, or term uh, the people as Jumia, which is a term coined by William Ben Chandler, and uh, strongly argued that many of these Jumia or these communities have actually uh, or, or could be categorized as a state evading uh, communities. And then and hence they engage in uh, such kinds of agricultural practices. So I'm sure uh, in, in this particular course, Ecology and Society, what we have actually tried to do is by engaging upon the subdiscipline of anthropology, which is called ecological anthropology, by picking up a few of those ecological anthropologists and tries to make sense of uh, what we understood as human ecology and then the conceptions of nature, contested domains and boundaries of culture, and also the various paradigms in human and environment relations and the nature, environment, and belief system. So I'm sure uh, uh, we will have some bit of knowledge in terms of how do we relate between the human society, uh, ecology, and uh, uh, the environment, and where people have or communities, most important, the indigenous communities have, you know, uh, uh, maintained some kind of relationship uh, with, with, with nature and the surroundings since millennia. And uh, as society has evolved and uh, with the intrusions of market economy, uh, global capitalism, so and so forth, uh, many of their means of lives and livelihoods are being a uh, threat. And uh, one could see, you know, the way in which how uh, things have evolved and changed over time. And uh, there is an arising need uh, to many of the, you know, uh, uh, disciplines like ecologists, anthropologists, and, and sociologists. And uh, a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary, you know, approaches is vitally important if we have to uh, locate and situate the whole debate or uh, notions of this ecology and society. So I hope and look forward uh, to uh, uh, respond to any queries or any uh, doubts. Uh, <clears throat> till then, uh, I'll sign off and all the best for your final answer. Thank you. Question to me.